Today is the seventh Sunday after Pentecost. It is also the feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Please notice in the bulletin, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, a call for Mass time. Please note that the Saturday Mass is preceded by confessions at 715. I ask you to please remember in your prayers Mr. David Field, the relative of our fields here in Cincinnati. He passed away this past Monday. Please remember in your prayers Mr. Thomas Neese, who was anointed in the hospital yesterday. Please remember in your prayers Mrs. Mary Ruth Kunkel, who is expected to pass very soon. Please remember in your prayers a young lady who will be undergoing surgery this week. I ask you to please remember in your generosity the Immaculate Conception Church food drive in honor of St. Vincent de Paul. It begins today and it will continue until next Sunday, the 23rd. You may place any items on the tables in Sacred Heart Hall. Thank you in advance for your generosity. There will be a meeting with Father Buckley next Saturday at around 3.30, if you're interested in meeting with him, the information is in the bulletin. My dear friends, I know that you are anxious to offer up the graces of the heat today for the poor souls in purgatory and to use it as an op opportunity to enrich your own souls. But I will give you a, a brief sermon today. I want to speak to you about three people in one event. Adam, Babel, Noah, and Abraham. We know that Adam and Eve had many more children than just Cain and Abel. Despite what a unbelieving world says, it doesn't just work with two kids, especially if they're two men to propagate the earth. Most all had become wicked over the years as they spread throughout the world, except for one family. One family was faithful to our Lord, and the head of that family was Noah. Noah was commanded to build an ark he endured much ridicule. He suffered from lack of human respect, but it didn't matter to him. He chose to obey God's law and to do the hard thing and to build what seemed to be a ridiculous thing in the middle of the desert, an ark. God often asks hardships. He often asks us to comply with his laws that he might make the good great. Noah worked as if all depended upon himself and his sons, and he prayed as though all depended upon God. His sons were worried that the rains would come before they got the ark completed. Noah reminded them this is God's work. The ark will be done when the ark is done and the rains will come when God wishes them to come. The flood came for 40 days, it rained, and 40 nights, and God used this water to purify the world, the earth. Noah entered into the ark with his wife, his three sons and their wives, and two animals of each kind. When the waters had abated, he exited the ark, and he did what you are doing right now, but less perfectly. He offered a sacrifice of an animal to God to thank God for the graces that he had received, he, Noah, and his family, to thank God for ridding the earth of its sinful individuals, as he will again in time. He offered sacrifice. But you, my dear friends, your sacrifice can effect salvation. 
His could not. His was a mere compliance with God's law in order to prepare men for the coming of the true sacrifice of the new law. Yesterday as I was returning from camp, there was a rainbow in the sky reminding me of God's promise to Noah that he would never again destroy the earth by water. It may be destroyed by fire. His three sons, Sem, Cham, and Japhet, they repopulated the earth, and their descendants would wanted protection. They wanted protection from a flood, and that is why they built the uh, Tower of Babel. Not to build it all the way to heaven, they would never reach that. They wanted to build it high enough that a flood would not affect them. God was not pleased. He made them the promise. He wanted their faith. He wanted their service. And so he destroyed the Tower of Babel. He confused their tongues. They all spoke the same language before. Now they felt that they no longer needed God. They would take care of themselves. He confused their language and then scattered them all over the earth again. Babel was left unfinished. The Tower of Babel means the Tower of Confusion. Noah lived about 950 years. And when he died, God was quick to raise up another worthy individual, Abram. Abram and Sarah would be united in holy, mat in holy marriage. And they would, all the world would be blessed through Abram. They would make a great nation. These were the promises of God, that he would give them a son. And that son's name would be Isaac. Abram means the father of nations, many nations. Sarah means princess, and Isaac means laughter. For Isaac made his parents laugh with joy, and Abraham would be the father of many nations. One of the greatest tests ever given to an individual on earth was given to Abraham. You children don't know how much your parents love you and how sad they would be at your loss. God could not have asked any greater service from Abraham than to take his own son Isaac up to Mount Moriah and there to offer him as a sacrifice. That is precisely what God did. I didn't understand this event at first until I understood that God is the arbiter of life. Abraham didn't understand it at first. This is what the pagans do. They kill their own children. And you're ask, the true God is asking me to sacrifice my son. Isaac did not oppose it. He didn't understand. He carried the wood on his back. They built the altar. They had the fire. And he turned to his father and he said, where is the sacrifice? Abraham couldn't tell him. It hurt too much. He said, God will provide the sacrifice. The next best answer to, you are Isaac. The next best answer, God will provide. And so when they got, to the, got the altar built, then Abraham told Isaac what God had told him. Isaac submitted his hands to be bound. Isaac, without fighting, was laid upon the altar and laid upon the altar. And as the flames were starting to lick around the altar, the angel of God stopped Abraham. Abraham had passed the test. Because you have given me your all, I will bless you. God said, the angel said to Abraham, because you have given God your all, we have to remember to pray for our parents as our parents pray for us. 
we have to remember that if you want to be a good leader like Abraham, you must be a good follower. You must learn well from your parents and your teachers and your employers. Because he did not hold back, God blessed him. Isaac soon married when he became of age to Rebekah, and Rebekah bore t twins, Esau and Jacob. And once again we see how God provides for those who put religion foremost in their lives and do the will of God. If you love me, keep my commandments. God love you. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.